Um, I, I didn't um, I didn't really see myself as a historical novelist, but it just seems to be the way my career has developed because that's the way the ideas have come. Now, with each when I wrote my first novel, which is called The Thief of Time, uh, the the process of research, the process of placing my character in the center of uh, 256 years worth of real life events and real life characters was uh, something which really enthused me inside of me. And I, I just felt as each book developed that it was something that I was getting better and better at and that I was certainly enjoying uh, quite a lot. Uh, it's got me into a certain amount of difficulty at times, certainly with um, the boy of Strike and Channels, uh, the, some of the criticisms of the book will come because readers or critics will think that if you change some facts from the history, then uh, that is a, that is a, that is a wrong, that is a, a morally wrong thing to do in some way. But the problem is that when you write a novel, even if it is set in a real place, in a real time, like a novelist, uh, once you introduce a fictional character into that time, that world is already corrupted, you're already changing it. And you, as the novelist, have to make a decision about what is important to be absolutely faithful and what is what you have more needs. And I felt with Boyd's Rock and Jabbers, for example, one of the things I changed was uh, the geography of the camp, you know, moving the commandant's camp outside the fence uh, in order that Bruno could walk to that fence every day and look across and ask questions. And to me, that is not. Um, that's not such a wrong thing to do, it's just moving ahead. However, there are other decisions which, uh, which I kept absolutely accurate. For example, the ending of the book, which is, uh, anyone who's read it will know it's a, it's a very sad ending. Um, but the ending is an honest ending, because that's the way those stories end. And I couldn't have a novel like that have an ending where the two boys would, would, uh, would be happy at the end and would survive. So to me, the um, the, 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 the sense of honesty in the book is more important than factual honesty. And, and that's the thing that I, that I try to see most of. É, eu imagino que seja, me confirma se eu estou certo, que seja um pouco diferente de você escrever um livro é, cujo fato real que sabe fazer é um motinho no um navio é, no século XVIII e o Holocausto. Né? É, eu, a questão de escrever baseado em fatos reais não é só uh, o que, que é real, o que, que não é, como você falou, de questões até técnicas, eu imagino que esse, esse problema da geografia do, do campo, de concentração, se ele era importante, você, isso era importante mudar por causa da narrativa, né? eu, uma, eu imagino que seja um motivo do gênero. A minha pergunta é em relação a, a dilemas assim, mais éticos, mais morais. Você tem mais dificuldade em escrever sobre o Holocausto, nesse sentido de mudar um pouco a realidade? É diferente do que escrever sobre o motivo no século XIX, é um tema que, ele, por ter sido já tão falado e tão, é, é, causar tanta controvérsia, muitas vezes, isso foi um obstáculo maior para você? Bem, a coisa que esses dois livros têm em comum, e o novo livro, que é o Winter Palace, também tem em comum, is that the narrative voice in all three is a naive one. Each of the characters who narrates those books, Bruno in, um, in Strike the Giannis, Strike the Star of the Bounty, and Yorgi in the Mutant Palace, are characters who are not familiar with the events that are taking place in front of them. So they are experiencing them with a complete innocence. The boy of the Bounty has never been to a ship before, so he knows nothing about it. I've never set sail for, you know, the seven seas, so it's, uh, it, it reflects my innocence. Um, Bruno is not uh, aware of what is actually taking place in the camp. So unlike other novels which will take the perspective of the Jewish character inside the camp itself, Bruno's perspective is one of complete innocence in it. And in the Winter Palace, when Yorki goes to St. Petersburg, he has never been confronted with such glory and such um, wealth and power before, so it's a new experience for them too. So they have that in common, but in terms of the ethical dilemma, there, there was one with Boyle Strachajama, certainly, in the rewriting. 
because when I wrote the first draft of the book, I wrote it in a very short space of time. You wrote it in two days ago. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it was a strange experience. What happened was uh, I had the idea for the novel uh, in Dublin on a Tuesday night back in uh, April 2004. And the, the original idea was just the two boys at the fence talking to each other. And I knew where the fence was and what they were doing. And the next morning, I just felt that the idea was so strong that I couldn't just walk away from it. So I didn't know if it was a novel, I didn't know if it was a short story, but I just started writing to see where it would take me. And by the Wednesday evening, it had taken me over so much that I felt I couldn't walk away from it at all. So in fact, I wrote all the way through Wednesday night, all the way through Thursday, all the way through Thursday night, and I finished it on Friday. So um, it was two and a half days of, um, of just constant work. Uh, I was exhausted. I had a full head of hair at the start, but and, uh, that's what it did to me. But, um, the, um, so when I was writing that first draft, then, it's, I wasn't thinking about those dilemmas. I was thinking about Bruno. I was thinking about what does he see next? At what point is he going to start understanding what's going on? Um, at what point is he going to start doubting his father? At what point is he going to be afraid of Lieutenant Cobbler? Um, and that's, I mean, that's all I was thinking about. I was thinking about the narrative progression, getting Bruno from stop to stop to stop, all the way to the end, and I knew how it would end. But in the rewriting of the book, it took about eight months to rewrite, um, there was certainly a lot of dilemmas there. There was the dilemma of whether or not to include the word Auschwitz in the book. And the word Auschwitz, went in and out and in and out and in draft. And that word is not actually in the final book. Um, it's, 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 it's implied through Bruno's misunderstandings, mispronunciations, that that's what the book is said. But I, I took the, the word out in the end so that I didn't have to be absolutely rigidly faithful to, to that camp. And also because it's not about one camp. It's about all the camps. And it's about genocide. And it's about prejudice and hatred. So it didn't have to be about one, but, but there was a lot of soul searching on something like that, you know. Is it right? Is it wrong? Should I, should I, should I specify? Am I being cowardly not? 